Manu Mangatu, an English professor, poet, editor, lyricist, film critic, research consultant, and publishing expert. He had published nine books, 79 international research publications, 97 academic papers, and 20 edited volumes. He finds delight in doing translations from Chinese, Persian, and Sanskrit. He won the prestigious Most Read and Recommended Researcher Award during the last three years. He currently offers part-time guidance to 27 research scholars from India, Iran, Australia, KSA, Indonesia, and Djibouti, and mentors about 1,300 postgraduates, guest lecturers, research scholars preparing for NTA net examination. Welcome, sir. Welcome to you all. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, ma'am, uh, for your kind words of welcome, and uh, I'm I'm really delighted uh, to to be here this this uh, nice morning, uh, meeting you all from Sri Parashakti uh, College uh, for women, and it's an honor and a delight for me to uh, to be part of this uh, lecture, to be part of this webinar, and. Uh, as, as, as our topic tells you, we are going to discuss about research. Now, uh, many of us would want to uh, have a good sleep. Uh, that is what we would like to do when we are told that we are going to have a lecture on, uh, on, on research because we know it is boring, right? So, uh, I will try not to bore you much. Definitely, it will be boring, but I guarantee that it will not be too boring. That is uh, the one uh, assurance that I can give you. And don't write anything. Don't write anything. Just listen to me. Just pay attention to me. And uh, we will discuss a few things about research, how we can get it more boring or get it less boring. So uh, as you can see, our title for today's uh, lecture is, I hope I am audible and visible. So, uh, the title for today's lecture is Method to Madness, Boredom to Freedom in Research. Now, Boredom to Freedom in Research. Okay. Can there be anything called freedom in research? Yeah, we know there is a freedom in research. When will that happen? When we complete our thesis, we will get some freedom from, from research, right? That is a big relief. But otherwise, is there any freedom? you can have while you are doing research or is there any method to this madness called research that is the question that we are trying to uh, pay attention to today so uh, i would take you through a certain very simple aspects of not research not uh, about research as well i'm trying to take you to uh, certain uh, through certain points on how we can make research an interesting enterprise or I would tell you what to know, what not to know, how to know and how not to know and finally how to move from boredom to freedom in research. This is the simple idea. Now uh, when you look at the first part of the title, a method to madness, what is this method to madness? I am sure uh, some of you, uh, of course the PG students would have uh, come across Shakespeare's Hamlet and Hamlet is a great research scholar. Well, he was studying at, Wit at Wittgenstein University when he hears the news of his father's death. So uh, he is a research scholar and we understand that Hamlet is mad or he is feigning madness. He behaves like, he acts like he is mad. So, a research scholar who is acting like he is mad, that is Hamlet for us in Shakespeare's, you know, immortal play Hamlet. And most of our friends, when we are doing research, most of our friends, obviously our parents and surely our relatives and neighbors will think that we are also mad because there is something totally wrong with what we are doing. So, uh, this is the idea. So, what is this method to madness? In, in, uh, in a certain uh, section of uh, Hamlet, there is a very interesting statement made by Polonius. Polonius, the father to Ophelia. So, Polonius makes this observation when he is a very intelligent person. So, uh, he observes Hamlet's 
uh, you know, the tantrums and the way he behaves. And he makes this very interesting observation. He says, though this be madness, yet there is method in it. Yeah, it, it looks like madness. It is madness. No question about it. But there is some method in it, some pattern in it. There is some methodology in his madness. Or if you paraphrase it into normal English, we can say, there is a, Polonius is saying, there is a method to Hamlet's madness. Now, uh, I have no doubt that the research students here at least, if the PG students haven't started research, uh, the research scholars here at least would agree with me that research is some form of madness. You know, you have these famous definitions of research and what a research scholar is, very famous, but you know, uh, semi joke kind of uh, definition. Who is a researcher? An academic who learns more and more and more about less and less and less that eventually he or she knows everything about nothing at all this is the uh, you know among students this is the definition of a researcher and what is research research is what you do when you don't know what you are doing right what you do when you don't know what you are doing that is research so these are the funny ways in which we look at research and a researcher now my question is, yeah, these definitions uh, kind of tell us that there is some form of madness in whatever we are doing uh, when we are doing research. Now, if it is madness, why should we do it? If it is pakka madness, pure madness, why should you and I do it? Why should all these people do research? Uh, I, I went through the profiles of your teachers. Uh, they have great profiles. They have uh, cleared net. They have cleared set. Most of them have an MPhil or a PhD degree, so they are research guides and research scholars. And we are saying that research is madness. So if research is really madness, why are all these people doing it? Because we have to do it. We have no other choice. We do it. We have to do it. That's it. It is like, you know, it is like asking someone, why should someone marry? The whole society keeps telling us, you should marry. Oh, you are still at, at, at that college, Sri Parashakti College. Haven't you married? Oh my God, for, for so many years I see you going to the school, then going to the college and as yet you aren't married. You know, research is like marriage sometimes. You never know how difficult and how tragic and how tough it is until you fall into the trap. And once you fall into the trap, what happens? Uh, you know, as Mephistopheles says uh, in uh, uh, Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus, Mephistopheles says, why people want to go to hell or why uh, the devils are interested in having more people into hell. Mephistopheles says, it is nice to have company. Even in hell, it is nice to have company. And that is why once we start doing research, we will ask all our friends, come, come, come. This is very interesting. Come, come, come and join research why because we want others also to experience this disaster called research same thing that happens with marriage right i'm just joking but you cannot get out of it and you cannot get into it you are trapped you are trapped you have to act before the world like you are happy once you register as a researcher you have to look like you are very happy yeah i'm doing some extraordinary things i am very happy this is the same thing that people do way after their marriage right they behave as if they are very happy they put up this whatsapp status and and, and facebook posts everything showing that they are very happy smiling but that is the only time they are smiling and you know both of them the research scholar and the married person have the same feeling about what they have done regret i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have done that until you marry it is uh, you know it is said until you marry there is no girl more beautiful than the girl you are going to marry and after you marry there is uh, all the other girls in the world are more beautiful than the girl you married same is the case with the topic that you take for your phd for your mphil for your ma project until you get your t topic approved by your teacher, until you get your research proposal approved by the research committee, your topic is the best topic in the world. 
and once it is approved and once you start your research you realize that all the other topics in the world are infinitely more beautiful and infinitely attractive infinitely useful than my own topic this is the same feeling <laughs> and look at it look at it even continuing the metaphor further after marriage you will realize that there are such things in life called responsibility managing the expenses looking after children washing clothes washing plates all these things have to be done after marriage and after registering for phd you realize that there are such things like research methodology we haven't heard about these things before we started research nobody fortunately told us about these uh, dark things so we learn that there is something called research methodology hypothesis mla handbook plagiarism supervisor supervisor signature a lot of hell so <laughs> i'm just kidding but see th there is something about research that this is something about research that we all encountered and that is why most people consider research as a necessary evil as a necessary evil it's terrible it is horrible but i don't have any choice i have to do it for completing the course requirements if you are an ma student or for status or for impressing the future mother in law yeah my daughter in law is a phd is a doctor so to impress your future mother in law to get a job to keep that job for all these things we need to do research now how to enjoy this research to enjoy what we do they say we need to do what we enjoy oh very good thank you so much new information no not at all now how can we make research an enjoyable activity you know when you look at the real researchers the true researchers yeah we have lot of researchers but i would say there are some researchers who do it just for the sake of it horrible researchers and there are some researchers who enjoy what they do they are the true researchers the good researchers who are passionate about what they do so the best researchers in the world are those that enjoy what they do other people think that these people are workaholics hopeless people no they are passionate about what they do they enjoy what they do how do they do that they find a method to this madness called research what polonius said there should be a method to this madness called research and then your research will become very beautiful research will become an enjoyable activity and half of the problem or i would say 90% of our problem with research or not able to enjoy research lies with our lack of knowledge it is only when we know what we are doing that we will be able to enjoy something we should know what we are doing we should know about what we are doing we should know thoroughly what we are doing or in in other words in very simple terms we should know how to do research in order to enjoy research 90% of the problem with the boredom associated with research is due to the lack of knowledge about how to do research so i would want us to answer two questions what should we know what should we know about research yeah we know we have heard so many things about research but does anyone actually tell us how to do research we have got done our ba ma uh, we are doing mphil or we are doing phd but has anyone told us how to do research we we get a lot of theory but has anyone really told us how to do research has anyone told us how to do choose a topic for research so what should we know that is important and how should we know that the second question what should we know and how should we know now there are certain basic skills that are required on the part of the researcher to be a successful researcher now what are the basic skills one obviously you should have good proficiency and fluency in the english language why Uh, it, it is very obvious we are literature students we are english language and literature students so we should have a mastery of the english language if we are to do a successful research in english 
that is a must. Again, even otherwise, even if we are not students of literature, we will have to have good command over the English language because we are to write our thesis in English. Written language is very important and it, is also, it also helps us to have a good command over the English language because most of the materials that are available are in English. So we need a good proficiency and very good prof fluency over the English language. I would say at least over the written language to be a good researcher. That is the basic skill requirement. So if you are not comfortable with your language, that is a big problem. And uh, my teacher friends here would agree that half of their problem with Correcting research thesis is about, not about methodology, not about anything else, but about the language, faulty language, grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes. So these, these are the minor things that we should have studied much earlier, but at least now we should be thorough about these things if we should be able to do research properly. And when I speak about writing the thesis, I want to speak about something else as well. Not any writing skill will help, not just about writing English, but about something called academic writing. We need to know something called academic writing to do proper research. Now, I would say, what, what is this academic research? Writing for the academic writing, writing for the sake of academic purposes, that is academic writing, right? So when you write a research paper, when you write a uh, thesis, when you write a PhD thesis, whatever it is, those things are known as academic writing. And there are certain skills and certain rules associated with academic writing. I'm not going to speak about any of those rules. I will just tell you a few things about the four pillars of academic writing. Basically, basically there are four things in academic writing. First, as in life, every affair begins with a proposal. Every academic writing begins with a proposal. You have to write a proposal, the research proposal. That is the first thing in academic writing, not going into the details. The second thing, you need to know how to write a good abstract. The abstract is your poster or your advertisement. You know, 10 to 15 sentences, you are summarizing what you are going to do in your research paper or in your thesis. You know, you call it proposal, you call it abstract, you call it synopsis, but that is the idea, the shortened version, your poster or the advertisement. That is the trap with which you have to uh, trap your supervisor. So the abstract. And then there is the research paper. I would say this is the most overlooked or ignored aspect of research writing. Many of us think that research is, as, is about writing an M, MA thesis or several participants left the meeting. Oh, are everybody sleeping? What happened? Yeah, anyway, so uh, many of us think that research is about an MA thesis or a PhD thesis or an MPhil thesis. But the lifeline of research, the essence of research today is the research paper. And what is the research paper? You know, there are seminars and conferences happening every other day in different parts of the world. And you are asked, they, they put up something called CFP, call for papers. And you are expected to write a research paper, submit an abstract. And if your abstract is accepted, then you have to submit your full paper, full research paper. And if that is accepted, you go to the seminar, present the paper, you will get a certificate of presentation and you can put it in your CV. And for teachers, it is very important for their academic, uh, you know, APA score and career improvement, CAS. For all these things, the research paper is very important. But, but let me tell you, my dear students, Please go for this. Please go and attend these seminars. These are very beautiful. The, it is from these seminars and conferences that you will get to know what you must know. So research paper writing or attending seminars, attending conferences. Nowadays, thanks to Corona, everything is happening on, online. So you can attend a lot of conferences and seminars online. Attend them. 
learn a lot from the experts in the field and also make it a point to present a paper there to write a paper submit a paper if it is rejected fine no problem getting rejected rejected is the reje rejection is the first step towards acceptance and even if it is rejected 10 times doesn't matter but submit submit your research paper so the research paper is the lifeline it is the vein and the artery of research and finally we have the research thesis that is what these research scholars do they submit a thesis they submit uh, a phd thesis they submit an mphil thesis so this is the first skill the academic writing skill the basic skill the first basic skill is the ability to be proficient and fluent in the english language the second skill that you would require is computer literacy computer literacy now you would think why should we speak about computer literacy now because we are speaking about research methodology but my dear friends computers have changed the way research is done today research is completely timeless and spaceless it is not tied to any time or any place you can you can sit at uh, Triverni Sangam uh, at Kanyakumari a beach and uh, you know write an email uh, submit your assignment as an email to your teacher it can be done and your teacher may be at some other place she may be at, uh, at Chennai uh, watching uh, Vijay's master some movie they, they must be watching so it is timeless and spaceless it doesn't matter where you are you can submit your thesis you can present your uh, assignment everything can be done online thanks to this facility called the computer and then the computers have given us easy access to a lot of knowledge otherwise unthinkable you know earlier research was a very laborious process of visiting the libraries collecting books finding books it was very much hellish but now thanks to the internet thanks to the computer we have everything at our fingertips we just need to know where to search and what to search and everything is there you just need to go to these databases and you will get everything very easily and finally i would say this thing as well about what computers have done to us before the advent of computers plagiarism was very easy nobody would be caught if they do plagiarism unless you copy directly from some very famous text you will not be caught but now because of computers what has also happened is if you have plagiarized computers will find out because most of the books available out there are digitalized and from these digitalized versions of books computers just you know these softwares turn it in urkund these softwares can just uh, check for similarity and then they will tell you that my dear friend your paper is 25 percent plagiarized your paper is 35 percent plagiarized 100 percent plagiarized that we know when it is 100 percent plagiarized we also know we don't need a software to tell us that it is 100 percent plagiarized because it is just copy and pasted completely so these are some of the things that computer has done and so it is very important for us to know the computer know the internet we should know how to use the computer to access tools access resources we should know how to use the internet to uh, use it to our benefit and also to avoid problems like plagiarism so this computer literacy is very important and and when i speak about computer literacy i, I would want you to stay away from certain tools as well uh, see there are certain things that you have to use and there are certain things that you must not use now uh, i don't know whether everybody would agree with me but there is a famous software called grammarly which uh, they say help you um, you know improve your grammar improve your language by leaps and bounds i personally would discourage using grammarly software no no i am not i am not the agent of any other rival company to grammarly my idea is grammarly will make you more reliant on the so on the software and less reliant on yourself worst still grammarly is not a human being grammarly doesn't know what you are thinking grammarly doesn't understand your creativity and so many mistakes that grammarly would show aren't really mistakes and many 
things that grammarly wouldn't show as mistakes are mistakes so my dear friends i find that many of my students are having a lot of confusion they end up having more confusion using grammarly than by not using grammarly so i would say avoid using this grammarly if you have it is a paid software and all the, there are free versions as well but avoid using grammarly it can spoil your language it can spoil your confidence in uh, learning your language secondly secondly another software that you have to avoid using is the paraphrasing software it comes in different names the paraphrasing software what it does is it you, you can take copy a, a paragraph and then put it into that software and that software will paraphrase it for you so uh, what it does is it will just uh, you know use synonyms for certain things and paraphrase it don't use that software it is it is not a correct thing to do it is an unfair means and it can land you in very serious troubles because if there are paraphrasing softwares then also remember that there are softwares that can find whether you have paraphrased using a paraphrasing software so be very wary of that paraphrasing softwares and then avoid the many free softwares out there that promise you that it will help you check plagiarism check this check that help you with grammar these free softwares are dangerous and faulty first thing is this it is faulty it doesn't always give you the correct uh, results second thing is it is dangerous why it is dangerous because these are free softwares they don't have any obligation towards you they will say that it is we don't take it or anything but this happens with many students they they upload their papers upload their research thesis on this uh, free softwares available on the internet and then very soon what will happen is this paper will be published some other place in some africa or america by some other student why because you have uploaded this paper and this paper is used by you know what will this free software do that software will sell this to some other students and they will publish it as their paper you have it published they have published and who will have the copyright over that paper they will have the copyright so be very careful about these free softwares available on the internet i'm not speaking about these citation generators or anything you can use those things for you know making sure that what you have written is correct C citation generators bibliography generators are there all those things you can use no issue but don't use this plagiarism detection software grammarly like phrase paraphrasing software where you have to upload your entire matter be very careful about those things and what are the things that you should have yeah we should have a, a whatsapp account definitely because our teachers are all messaging on whatsapp uh, we need whatsapp we need facebook but i would say that one social media account that all of us should have is a linkedin account why linkedin linkedin is very important because linkedin is a professional network there you won't find a lot of trash and more importantly linkedin can help you find jobs linkedin can help you find potential employers linkedin can help you find uh, help you find and connect with people with similar research interests like you so linkedin is very good i would suggest you yeah you can use this facebook or whatever you want that is none of uh, i i don't have any problem with that but also use this linkedin this is a very good uh, social networking platform that can be used by you to your advantage and the second thing that i would recommend to all of you i went through your website your college website sri parashakti college for women kotalam i went through your website and below your website there is uh a title useful links or useful websites research links or something and below that they have given the name of research gate my dear students research gate is very important create an account on research gate there are things like google scholar and academia as well those are also good but uh, you know google scholar is not very vast and it, it doesn't contain as much information as research gate has and academia.edu is a paid site you have to pay for it 
So I would recommend ResearchGate. It is the it is the most growing, it is the most developing software out there, you know, uh, uh, website out there, where which can help you immensely with research. You can get a lot of, this is a very underexplored area, ResearchGate. So create an account on ResearchGate and use ResearchGate. You can publish your papers and everything. It is not a publishing software or anything. That is not the idea. Just go to researchgate.net, create an account, and then you can post your research papers there. And all the famous researchers, 99% of the famous researchers in the world use this software to use this website to publish their research. So you can find a lot of useful articles freely downloadable on ResearchGate. Additionally, you can link with famous researchers on ResearchGate. So ResearchGate is ultimately important. I recommend each one of you, each PG student, each research scholar, if there are any teachers who don't have a ResearchGate account, have a ResearchGate account. Now there is a problem. When I recommend ResearchGate, I know that it is very tough to create a ResearchGate account. Why is it tough? Because you have to prove that you are a researcher. It is not like other social media websites, whether you can just go and enter the site and uh, give it a login ID and password and get it approved. No, it is not that easy. In ResearchGate, to create an account, it is really tough. You should prove your research metal. And for you, students, research scholars, teachers, there is another way. Without providing any proof that you are a researcher, there is another easy way to create a login on ResearchGate. And that is to use an institutional email address. Use an institutional email address. Now, uh, would any of the teachers present here tell me that, do you have uh, institutional email addresses? Are there any teachers left here? Is there anybody awake? Hi. Hello. Is there anybody awake? Everybody is left? Do we have institutional email addresses? Institutional email address means, suppose your teacher's name is Rajeshwari. So, she, her email address would be something like, Rajeshwari at Paresh Parashakti College dot edu something like that that is an institutional email address have I gone mute or is there any problem nobody is responding your teacher was telling me that you are all very shy people don't be shy I am also very shy so we are all shy let us speak uh, at least for some communication somebody do you have an institutional email address not the gmail address that you have but do you have yeah Are you messaging or you can ch put put it on okay okay uh, somebody has said yes okay then then it is very good you ha so you have an institutional email address which is very good okay so what is the advantage of if you don't have get it students you can get it as well because it is freely provided by any institution and the UGC has said that any institution in uh, which which is under the UGC your college is under UGC uh, it is getting funds from UGC it is an autonomous college it is accredited by uh, NAC at A grade so definitely your college has an institutional email address facility and this institutional email address is freely available to all students each student will have your own institutional email address if your name is whatever if your name is flora jacob flora jacob will have her email address as something like flora jacob at uh, parashakti college dot in or parashakti college dot edu jyoti shwari at uh, parashakti college guru devi at uh, parashakti college so that kind of uh, that kind of email address you will be getting and using that email address and its password you can easily create an account on ResearchGate. And remember, once you leave the college and once you are employed somewhere else as in some other capacity, it is very difficult to create a ResearchGate account. So use that opportunity now. Uh, who will give this email address? 
either the computer department people who are in charge of the college website or ask the librarian and if nobody knows about it ask the principal ask your teacher some some teacher was saying that they have institutional email address so they ask them uh, to get email uh, institutional email addresses for you use it and then uh, have a create an account on uh, research gate then another software which is very useful i don't say everyone should buy it or anything but another software which is very important is urkund urkund yeah no, it is not available for students for free it is a paid software and the ugc has spent crores and crores of rupees to make this urkund freely available to all the colleges and universities in our country your college i, I saw in your um, you know your university Manon Manium MS University uh, has uh, stipulated that any researcher should make sure that your th thesis should contain less than 25% similarity on Urkund. So your university is using the Urkund software. There are two softwares out there which are very good, Urkund and Turnitin. There are many other free softwares like Plagiarism Checker and all. Don't trust them, they will land you in trouble. Urkund and Turnitin are the best. Urkund is available at your college with your college librarian uh, and he will help you not you will not have a personal account it is not possible to give personal accounts to students but they will help you uh, to check your uh, document for plagiarism teachers can definitely use that software students also i mean if, if the management agrees they can also use it and don't don't task them because it is tough and uh, you know if so many people goes it's very tough one thing you can purchase is turnitin Turnitin is again a very expensive software, its price is uh, 5 lakh, 6 lakh, it goes like that. But there are, uh, you know, uh, cheaper soft, cheaper versions of Turnitin available uh, for 2,500, 3,000 rupees. So, at least for teachers, at least for your department, English department, get one or two uh, accounts and it will help you check your documents for plagiarism and it is a very good thing. Why? Because you may not know when plagiarism has entered your thesis so it is important to keep track of uh, your documents and make sure that your documents are not plagiarized so i would recommend at least for the department one or two one or two accounts for the department for the sake of the teachers and for the sake of the students to get this account ask the management for this i i, I know i am saying so many things to the management they may not be happy but last thing that i want to suggest to you is access to inflitnet and jstor again i hope that your college has access to inflitnet yes or no uh, you can type it on the chat box uh, yes or no do you have inflitnet access jstor access to jstor uh, at your college uh, can you access jstor at your college teachers students anybody have you heard of JSTOR? J S T O R. Can you uh, do you have access? If you don't have access, what I am telling you is uh, tell your management to give you access to this turn it uh, you know uh, inflitnet because inflitnet is again it is the biggest the world's biggest repository of research materials. For us, for English language and literature students, there is a special place in uh, Inflipnet called JSTOR, where you can find millions and millions of articles on any topic that you want to uh, study. So, for example, if you are studying an article by T.S. Eliot, or if you are studying an essay by William Emerson, or, or if you are studying something on John Crow Ransom, or, uh, or Aristotle, or Plato, you cannot find materials on it. The best place to go is JSTOR and my dear friends because your college is an autonomous institution registered with the UGC with 12B and 2F certification the college has this advantage this college which paying just 5000 rupees the college can get access to inflitnet it the UGC has spent crores and crores of rupees to get this accessible to our institution so use it Tell, tell your principal, tell your management to make it available for you. And it is, you see, the management has to pay just 5,000 rupees for a year. One year subscription, 
5000 rupees and all the students and all the teachers in the college will get free access to inflipnet you will get your own login id and password and from inflipnet from jstor you can download thousands and thousands of very useful material for your studies for your research for whatever academic purpose that you want to use these materials for so use it as well it is very important tell them i mean uh, if if you don't have it tell your um, uh, tell your class teacher or tell your uh, head of the department to tell the management they will do it for you because just 5000 rupees and you know uh, even 50 crore rupees would not be sufficient to get such a valuable asset for your institution so get it so so these are some of the computer related things i'm sorry for uh, you know uh, moving away from the topic now I, i was telling you about two things that we require first one uh, english language literacy second one computer literacy third thing that we require is research literacy or we should need to know and this is the three literacies we need the final one is research literacy we need to have a good research literacy if we are to be good researchers so what is research literacy what is research you know a common man's understanding of research would be like this for us for common people research could mean two things one to establish something that somebody already knows that is research you know some people knows some people may know these things but you are trying to find it out that is research for example uh, you are writing a novel you are going to write a novel and you want to write about uh, for example victorian age you know you are set, your novel is set in victorian england so what will you do you will uh, take books from the library you will read books from the library on victorian period victorian literature the victorian style victorian dress code why because you want to write a novel which suits perfectly with the victorian age so what will you do you will do research so the novelist or the poet or the any creative writer has to do you know at some stage he or she will be doing some research a journalist does research this sort of research you know uh, a journalist is behind some politician who has done some corruption what will she or he do uh, he will he or she will go and investigate do research on how this politician made this money whether he or she is connected with some underworld dons so this kind of research yeah somebody knows who knows the politician knows all these things the journalist is trying to uncover reveal all these things for the sake of the public and then we will have exclusive coverages on news channels or on uh, newspapers saying that this these and these things were brought out by this research by this journalist so the journalist is a researcher the policeman the detective the uh, you know cbi all these people are investigators who find out things that are already known to the criminals they are all researchers the, there are market researchers who study how people buy or or what kinds of uh, products people buy what kind of sanitizers people buy do, during uh, corona season and this kind of study is also research so this is the common man's understanding of research to find out things that are already known to others and then for us again there is another way in which we understand research to find out something that nobody knew before nobody knew about this before that kind of research what is that research for example the medical research now these doctors are uh, covaxin we have found out covaxin when they were finding out when when they were in the process of discovery invention what were they doing they were finding out they were doing research to find out something that nobody knew before so that kind of research is also research to find out something that nobody knew nobody knew before or the research done by our scientists you know the scientists from the nasa or from the isro these scientists are all doing that kind of research to find out things that nobody knew before now so from this typical understanding we can understand that research is usually done either to throw light on to hidden or concealed knowledge what to create new knowledge two purposes of research one to 
throw light or to discover something that is already known and two to create some new knowledge so these are the twin purposes of doing research according to a common man and that is necessary for our purpose we may be doing both kinds of research in our research but this is the basic idea of research and this is research literacy and it in its very beginning you are studying the alphabet or you are studying the letters and the basic words of research and then how to know how to know how can we know what we need to know about research first thing read the mla handbook you have to study the mla handbook right or do you follow the apa style i, I believe that uh, you follow the mla style at your institution mla modern language association style is being followed for writing your research papers writing your research articles writing your phd thesis so we should read it right we should read it not just they say that we have to study the mla so uh, for research scholars they have to, for coursework they have to study the mla handbook i would suggest when you enter the ma program itself when you become enrolled as an ma student itself that time itself read and study the mla handbook it is very useful it will give you lot of knowledge about how to go about your research then read any one or two books on research methodology on how research is conducted what is how to make a research good research topic what is a, a thesis statement what is a research question uh, what are the different research methodologies what are the tools and techniques of research how to make chapter division how to make a write an introduction how to write a conclusion what is a hypothesis quantitative research qualitative research you have to know all these things and don't expect your teachers to teach all these things because you know already the syllabus is so vast that the teachers cannot teach you all these things there are only 24 hours all i know that all the teachers at sri parashakti college have applied uh, for an increase in the daily allowance from 24 hours to 48 hours why because they realized that in 24 hours they cannot uh, complete the syllabus so they have requested to god for an in increment uh, from daily of daily time from 24 to 48 hours we cannot complete the syllabus so it is impossible for teachers to teach you all these things so my dear students you must do it read the mla handbook read a research methodology book your teachers will suggest books for you whether it be kothari or whether it be some other new book that you want to study the teachers will suggest books to you but you must read and you must study and then you are going to write a research paper but you should know how to write a research paper right and for that what can you do you can read a research paper there are so many research papers everywhere there are free research papers available on the internet you go to research gate you go to academia you just google on the internet you search google scholar everywhere you can find a lot of very good research papers or you can refer your library there will be journals in those journals you can find good research papers so read good research papers that is one very good way in which you can know how to do this research so reading good research papers and if you are doing a phd if you are doing a phd always remember at least read one good th phd thesis before you start writing your thesis it's a model i mean it is always good to have that originality and ingenuity but it is also good to know from others how they are doing things so that is another important thing and one very important thing very simple thing but something that many people don't do i want to tell you this uh, i know you students are very good you will do this but still i am telling you read your primary materials and secondary materials if you have taken a novel for study suppose you are studying joseph conrad's heart of darkness uh, a deconstructive reading or a post colonial reading of joseph conrad's heart of darkness that is the title of your uh, ma dissertation first you have to read the novel right even by the time you complete the thesis at least by that time you should be uh, you should have read the um, book right so what i am saying is read the primary materials read the secondary materials both are very important you know uh, something that sherlock holmes says it is a capital mistake 
to theorize before one has data. Don't theorize before you have data. And what is your data? Your primary materials and secondary materials are your data. So it is very important that you read through them many times. The primary materials must be read at least three or four times before you can say with confidence that, yeah, I understand what I have read. So uh, that is very important. Read. Then use your library, my dear friends. Use your library. Read from the library. Yes, you can read newspapers. Yes, you can read magazines. All are very good. But also read these journals. Your college is spending a lot of money to purchase journals for you. Uh, there will be some very good books on research in your library. Read them. And one thing that I would say no is don't ask fellow researchers. Don't ask your friends about how research is done. Because I mean, why I am saying this is I am not saying everyone is bad or everyone will misguide you. That is not the idea. But mostly students get wrong information from their, from their colleagues because people are, they also don't know much. They are also like us, like, right? So don't ask too many opinions, opinions especially. How is this? Is this good? You know, people may not know. So ask knowledgeable people if you think that some some of your colleagues are good enough then it is fine but preferably don't ask other researchers or colleagues or friends why because one thing that i find many students doing is they will just compare they will compare so one person may be you doing qualitative research another person may be doing quantitative research and if the person doing quantitative research ask the person doing qualitative research the, the person doing qualitative research will say, no, 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 this is not how it is done. Our pro, 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 supervisor has said that we should do it like this, 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 this. But will it be applicable to this thesis? No. So these are some of the basic mistakes that we can make. And another thing is we compare. When we look at anybody else's topic, we will feel that that topic is easier. My topic is very bad. That topic is easier. And that person is thinking the same about our topic. Your topic is better than mine. My topic is oh terrible, terrible topic. So don't compare. Each topic is good. Every topic is good. And students always ask. I get a lot of messages. Sir, can you suggest a good topic? Sir, or uh, then I will say I will not suggest topics for you, my dear friends. I will tell you how to, how to make a good topic. So I will teach them how to make topics, but I don't teach them uh, good topics. I will not tell them good topics. And then they will ask, sir, is this a good topic? Now, the thing is, there is nothing called a good topic. Every topic is good. It depends on how you do it. If you do it properly, it will be a good thesis. If you do it poorly, it will be a bad thesis. As simple as that. As simple as that. So there is no one good thesis or one bad thesis. And if you have doubts you have done all this reading so right until now i was telling you should use the library you should read the mla handbook you should read your uh, you know research methodology book you should read uh, primary material secondary material but we can have doubts right we are human beings we can have doubts so how can we clarify these doubts ask your supervisor ask your supervisor ask your teachers they will tell you but my dear students let me tell you one thing uh, from from the point of view of teachers i am telling you see don't go to them to clear basic doubts basic things means things that you can find elsewhere don't go to them because teachers have lot of workload so we must respect their time you can if you if there is a genuine doubt if you don't understand something it is okay to go and ask but don't go and ask your teacher miss how to do this uh, how to do a research paper how to write a research paper because it is not possible to tell you in one or two words or one or two sentences or even in five or ten minutes how to do research so you have to read and understand once you, we are a pg students hence we are pg students we are expected to read and understand for ourselves we cannot always be spoon fed so be self sufficient but of course if you have genuine doubts go and ask the teacher and another very interesting person you can ask regarding research is your librarian 
I don't know where I don't know about the librarian at your college definitely you know what these librarians will know a lot of things about research we may wonder the uh, wonder when we talk to them about the uh, amount of information and the, and the quantum of knowledge that they possess they know a lot of things about research and they will tell you how to find your books they will tell you how to find the topics that you are looking for they have they are very knowledgeable people they are and they want to they have nobody unfortunately nobody goes and asks a librarian un unless what time it will open what time it will close or can i borrow this book these are the only questions we ask the librarian but the librarian knows many things my dear friends ask the librarian he she, he, she will uh, help you a lot in your research okay and, uh, and, and uh, unfortunately what happens is most people don't go to the library most people go on, don't go to the supervisor you don't do that when you when, <laughs> yes, for example when you check the last scene in the whatsapp of a researcher in the whatsapp when you check the last scene it will say eight seconds ago and uh, when you ask the librarian when when did this research scholar come to the library uh, the last scene the librarian would say i the this student last seen eight months ago and then your research supervisor will say last seen eight years ago that should not happen we should go to the library and we should go to our research supervisor as many times as possible research supervisor the research guide and finally now th these are some of the what and how i was telling what i was telling you and then another thing i want to tell you is how to move from boredom to freedom in research to move from boredom to freedom what are the things that we have to do first thing and it is a very important thing choose a topic that you are interested in choose a topic that you are interested in not choose it not don't choose a topic that your friend is interested in don't choose a topic that your supervisor is inter was interested in don't choose a topic that the internet is interested in choose a topic that you are interested in because let me ask you my dear friends if you are going to marry and uh, will you say that my dear friend uh, please tell me is this boy good uh, whatever you say i will agree no we will have our own opinion right similar is the case with the research topic choose wisely and choose a topic that you will enjoy doing it is a golden rule choose a topic that you will enjoy doing because if it is a phd you are going to spend the next four or five years of your life with this topic and if this topic is terrible your life will be terrible if your topic is good and sweet and loving then you will have a wonderful life so choose a very interesting topic or the interesting in the sense it should be interesting to you that is the first thing that you should remember and this is what i would want to tell you as a as a measurement as a touchstone even if you decide not to complete your thesis you are doing your research after one year you decide no i cannot do this research some reason but even then you should look back and say that but that last one year i spent it usefully this is important so even if you decide not to complete your thesis it should be time well spent or you should have learned something so choose topics that will inform you that will enable you grow as a person in that sense you should talk, choose a good topic and remember choosing a topic is not the beginning of research many people think that it is the beginning of research oh i having yet cho chosen my topic everyone all the other students in my class have a topic i haven't even started i haven't got a topic my dear students let me tell you choosing a topic is research it is one of the most important parts of research and it is half of the research so choosing is a topic is not the beginning of research it is research and it should be your topic it provides you the chance to learn new things research is about discovering learning and sharing what you know it's like it's an amazing job where you are paid for learning anything that you want to learn so that is the best thing about research in fact see anywhere else you are not paid for learning but research you get the reward for your learning and 
it should enable us grow as intelligent people right uh, you know uh, once a person asked uh, a farmer uh, sir you have four four sons no so what are they doing uh, he said uh, my first son is a phd holder in english literature my second son is doing his mphil in uh, english literature my third son is a post doctorate in english literature and my fourth son is a thief is a thief oh very bad you have such educated people in your family and why do you have that fourth son who is a thief throw him out of your why why didn't you throw him out of your family and the father said see the first three are unemployed the fourth one is the only person bringing some money to the home so how can i throw him out of the home this is a job but this is a <laughs> practical thing as well our research should be something that should be useful to us not just about money but it should help us grow as individuals research should open doors research actually opens a lot of doors it, it you know you can travel it gives you opportunity to travel travel where you can go and attend conferences you can make new friends you can meet meet new professors very good teachers you know right now we are thinking that the teachers we meet in our college are the only teachers but there are other teachers as well there are other students as well you get to learn from them you get a lot of new information you get to know a lot of beautiful people beautiful places you can go go to other colleges go to libraries explore excavate there is a million detail that even the best photo in the world can't expose to you you have to go and see so go to these conferences meet researchers like you participate in events and that will make life very beautiful it will open the doors to uh, explore and excavate new things and then in research start broad but then come narrow never begin with a narrow topic and think about you know extrapolating it and enlarging it what you should do is start broad and then narrow down your topic little by little by little research is a big task so it is very difficult to know where to where to start see there is nothing wrong with a basic internet search you can just google it's it's not wrong to use the internet uh, see people tell us that don't use wikipedia for research i agree don't use wikipedia for research but it's a very good beginning to start your research you can use google and wikipedia to start your research yeah they are not always accurate they may not provide you the exact information but it's a good way to begin because these this google and this wikipedia give you a brief overview and the history and the major points the reception all these things you will get from a wikipedia entry so go to wikipedia first where if you are looking to start your research and to decide and you are yet to decide on a topic and one more thing don't end with wikipedia start with wikipedia if your research ends with wikipedia then your research is finished it's useless but if your research begins with wikipedia it is fine so never end with wikipedia but start with wikipedia wikipedia is a wonderful place to start your research spend some time searching the keywords and there will be a lot of hyperlinks to other keywords and like that so you can get a lot of related information all in one space that is what wikipedia would do for you yeah teachers tell us that don't cite wikipedia because uh, some information may not be 100% correct it is not an a research website so you should not cite wikipedia in your research papers or research thesis but you can use it and it will give you a lot of information and then have a good research question in your mind your thesis should emerge from your research from this research question and whatever you do should be based on think on this thought am i able to answer this question or is this book going to help me answer this question so it is important to frame a very useful very clear research question and whatever you do later on should be based on this research question always have that research question at the back of your mind and think 
whether this information this book this article this teacher this seminar this lecture is going to help me answer this research question and it is because we have questions that we don't know the answer to that we are doing research it is as simple as that we don't know the answers to those questions that is why the, we are doing research research there is always this search in research concealment and discovery so that is an important part of of of, of research and then the the hours you spend doing this literature reviews it can be very useful because literature review is where you will locate the research gaps what are research gaps basically research a research gap is something that tells you what others have missed what other people have have not seen what other people haven't looked at have overlooked so to know the research gap because only when you find the research gap your topic exists your, if your topic must have some ground some existence you should be able to find a research gap and how to find a research gap the hours and hours of literature review that you do will help you locate your research gap so literature review is important and research is be beyond what happens in a classroom setting rather than simply sitting in a class idly and inactively uh, listening to what all the rubbish the teachers are no te you are not your teachers but when people like me are saying you are feeling like sleeping you are feeling bored so it's not just about listening to people it is about applying to your knowledge uh, to things applying to no applying the knowledge to your life research is empirical what is empirical what is it is based on something that is experienced seen or felt it is not theory okay when, when we think that something is empirical we think that it simply means it is scientific no it means it is something that is experienced it is like emotion so research is practice it is action it is movement it is not sitting idle it is jumping up and running somebody it was it archimedes uh, who found out something when he was in the bathtub when he ran out uh, eureka eureka he ran out uh, in the joy and excitement of discovering something new so that is very important research is application research is application if we are not able to apply whatever we find out in research then our research can be useless i mean at least somebody in future should be able to apply whatever we have found out in research you know uh, a, uh, a doctor a phd holder he, he couldn't find a job and he went uh, to a house seeking job and uh, the the madam there she said uh, see there are no jobs here but maybe i want somebody to clean my house can you do it then he said yeah I, I will do it if you will pay money i will do it because i am not able to earn any income and then she said okay uh, take a broom and sweep the floor sweep this uh, place sweep the yard take a broom and sweep the yard and if 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 that is if you do it well i will uh, give you a job here but madam i have a phd then she said yeah you have a phd but do first do this thing take a broom and sweep the floor then he said madam i have a phd then she said oh i am sorry give me the broom i will show you how this is done what is the problem lack of practical application we study a lot of theory and we don't know how to even sweep the floor yeah these are fun these are jokes we find all these things you know in uh, in cinemas where research uh, phd people don't know how to fill a bank form i don't know how to fill a bank form i know that many of you don't because we all do it online right so i mean it's fun but there are there is something about it and uh th these are some of the things that i would want you to do we are uh, running uh, out, you know your time is running out so always i want to tell you this travel into the jungle 
travel into the jungle. Research should be like traveling into the jungle. It is exciting. It's new. Nobody has been there before because you are doing things that you only have thought about. And you, ha you are finding things that nobody else has found about. So uh, it is like traveling in the jungle. No rules. Don't worry. Do your research. Be happy with whatever you are doing. And know that research can change you. Research is the future. And research is a never ending process. You can make mistakes. But enjoy those mistakes. Because some of the greatest discoveries have been mistakes. Right? Uh, many great discoveries have been accidental discoveries. So even enjoy the mistakes that you make but still do research enjoy what you are doing as uh, Matthew Arnold said we need critical ideas we need a critical epoch to have creativity as well so if creativity is to flourish we should do some research we should do some criticism it is very important for us to uh, do research and do publish papers and do uh, paper presentations do thesis so that there is a critical a creative epoch in the future so we should provide ideas for our future generations to write creatively forget about the myths about research there are lots of myths about research surrounding us people tell us that research cannot be a creative activity absolutely wrong research is a creative activity you can be very creative in uh, in research you can use very interesting titles you can write in the first person many teachers tell us never write in your when you are writing research never write i or my no problem my dear friends Modern research tell us, Western research tells us very clearly that it is not a mistake to write in the first person because that is when the reader finds it most interesting and that is how we do whatever we do in real life, I and my, you and yours. So it is okay to use the first person in your research, no problem with using the first person. Then there is another uh, myth that we have that we think we think that the research guide should be the co-author in every paper that I publish. It is wrong, it is illegal and it is a mistake. It is a myth in India. We also think that it is important to publish our papers in high impact factor journals. That is a myth. Impact factor doesn't apply to uh, research papers from humanities. I am not going into the details, just telling you. Uh, a few things then we think that UGC permits or our university MS university permits 25% plagiarism no it doesn't permit any plagiarism it simply allows 25% uh, similarity it is okay to have some similarity because of the problems with the software that is what they say and uh, people used to think that MPhil is a necessary route to PhD. Now PhD, now MPhil is being scrapped. The national educational policy drafted by the government, it says that no, uh, MPhil is being stopped forever. So MPhil is important. No, that is a wrong idea. MPhil is not important for research. So these are certain things that you have to keep in mind and I'm not uh, taking, killing your time any further. I will wind up here. So my dear friends enjoy your research uh, i may have uh, skipped a lot of things because our idea was not to look at what research methodology is what research question is what a research thesis statement is this those are topics for another day we will discuss those things today i just wanted to tell you how to make your research an interesting thing uh, trust me research is beautiful Research is a very interesting activity. Only thing is, you should enjoy doing research. Thank you. If anybody is listening, thank you for your patient listening.